Hi guys! Welcome back to another episode of our live seasons where we talk about the different seasons of life and how we grow through it. I'm your host Wen, you know it, be sure to stick to the end for a little bonus. And if you guys are actually listening to this on YouTube, please take a screenshot of your favourite quote or concept that you guys took away from this episode and tag me on IG at our live seasons so I can share it. Of course, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, feel free to share it as well. We'll love to see how you know our live seasons has been integrated into your life. Also, just an update, this week I've decided to open up a new segment on Instagram, the close friend list, where I will share more on like my personal side of my journey, more raw talks and also getting a small group of you involved in choosing topic ideas for each week's episode. And like just a little bit of the behind the scenes of producing our live seasons. And the slots actually filled up like pretty quickly. And we do have some of you who are in like the waiting list. So it's honestly amazing. Like less than an hour, I think the 10 slots were actually filled up. So I'm very appreciative and very excited for those 10 who have snagged that spot. But for those who are interested in actually um, being in the close friend list, by the time you're listening to this, I think... um. Maybe in another month or so, I might open up more slots. We'll see how it goes. But for those of you who are actually in, by the time you're listening to this, there should be already some movements. So yeah, for those of you who are interested, feel free to drop me a DM. I'll keep you in the loop in terms of like the next month's slots opening, okay? Which is in April. Anyways, um, if you enjoy topics like that, don't forget to leave me a review of this podcast on whichever platform that you're on so that I can... I know that it actually helps you guys, okay? And I know that a lot of you have actually taken the time to DM me and to let me know that, you know, episodes like that do help you guys. So I'm very, very, very happy and excited. So on to today's topic. As we are on the roll for relationships-related topics, I figured why not I should share some of the lessons that I've learned in my previous relationship of four years and more of what I've actually discovered about myself and some wisdom that I've received while I was on this healing journey. And this year, I'm actually on the second year mark of healing from this relationship and we are going through a heartbreak now, which I know many of you are because of like the requested episodes or like the DMs that you guys are actually sending me. I know it may sound cliche, and meh but it really does get better okay you know i hate the typical stuff but this is an exception as much as you don't feel like it right now you just gotta keep going and keep swimming okay healing is a continuous journey without a destination there will be times where you feel okay and there will be times where you start to reminisce and feel the heartache all over again but know that it is normal. As long as you catch yourself and place your focus back onto feeling better, you will and you have to get better. It's just how life works, alright? So now, without babbling on, let's get into the first lesson, shall we? There's a total of 17 lessons. So yeah, bear with me. I mean, some of the lessons are lessons that I've actually learned along the way. I mean, pretty much all of them. And I hope that these lessons can actually help you as well in terms of wherever you are. And probably some lessons you might feel more attached to or you might relate to it more but here we go first lesson trust your gut feeling or your intuition don't try to justify or logicize it okay there has to be a reason why you feel what you feel whether it's just the vibe or you can't put towards at the moment whatever that is trust it okay your intuition will never lead you astray you don't have to confront it immediately but just let them show you by observing okay in terms of like um their actions if certain actions that your partner did or rather that person did makes you feel a little bit icky or you just feel uncomfortable don't you don't have to confront it especially if you're not a confrontational person what you can do is you can actually observe and allow them to show you through it okay which is why lesson number two is on observing more and talking less. So honestly, this is, I feel like, a skill set that will help you in any aspects of your life, be it at work or building relationships with people. Because when you take the time to observe and not be in the center of conversation at all times, you notice a lot of little things about a person. The way they speak, their choice of words, their thought process, their habits, their perspective on life, and you get a good sense of their vibe, whether or not you know, they'll be someone that you would be comfortable with on a one-on-one setting. 
it sounds like a lot of work and it sounds super tough, but it's actually not, okay? It's just listening and observing people. And people appreciate that side of you more because you actually pick things up that not the rest of the people can pick things up or rather can see. You take on a very unique role in any setting, right? It's very powerful once you master it. I can testify to that. This also applies to the very start of a, re- of a relationship where you guys are just getting to know each other. I would say don't lay out all your standards and expectations up front. Just let them show you because it's not what they say, but more on what they do that matters, right? That shows you their real self and it is those little and subtle gestures that matters. That's why I would say that one of the lessons that I've learned is to not tell people what are my expectations or what are my goals, what are my, uh, not goals, but what are my standards because I feel like then you might skew, um, or rather it might affect the way that they show up in front of you just to want to impress you. And it's not that it's wrong, it's just that, you know, humans are like that. We want to impress each other. So I would say keep your standards and keep your expectations to yourself and allow them to show you at the very start when you're trying to get to know someone, okay, and learn to observe. So, number three, don't expect someone else to come into your life to complete you, okay? And I feel like this is something that everyone would expect, or rather it's something that even for me back then, I felt like um, when I find a partner, I need to find someone that is able to complete me, okay? And not compliment me. So, you gotta work on yourself to feel complete because no one can provide that security and inner peace for you. It's on you and not on anyone else. It's not on them, okay? The more you expect, the higher the chances of you getting disappointed. So go in with no expectations, but just with your standards. Be clear on your standards and communicate openly and never lower them, okay? And when I say communicate openly, like I mentioned, you're not gonna just, here are my standards, let me lay it out for you. It's more like, as you know, as conversation goes on, you would know how the person is like and you would kind of, you know, have this banter. So that's that, okay? Never ever lower your standards, okay? Your standards are your standards for a reason. Which brings me to the next lesson of Learn to detach yourself from the situation at the very start, okay? When we start a new relationship or, you know, getting to know a person, we tend to be in it, right? Like feeling the butterflies, the giddiness from all the banter, the excitement from a first date. All these are good emotions to feel, don't get me wrong. And by all means, embrace it with your whole heart. Like really just embrace it and be in the moment. But keep a mental note that when you start to feel a need to convince yourself to accept certain values or things that you would not have otherwise accepted if it were to be a friend, it is a sign to actually step back and look at the situation from a third-party perspective, okay? That's why there's this saying that goes, you know, an outsider's perspective always give a different sense of place to an insider perspective. So trust me, I know it's annoying and you probably hate it when someone whom generally cares about you is warning you about certain red flags of that person that you choose to ignore, right? But it might just be true. So detach whenever necessary, but embrace the fun times as well. And it's all about balancing and not losing yourself, going head over heels for someone because the thing that you should be romanticizing is your life, okay? And not that person, all right? Because we oftentimes, we create scenarios in our minds whenever, you know, like we get into relationships and I know it all too well, especially for women, we tend to romanticize that part of our lives that, you know, what, What's the possibility with that person, even though we may only know them for just a bit. So this is a very important lesson that I feel like for everyone or even for me to learn is to allow myself to detach from time to time and look at that situation from a third party perspective, from a fresh perspective and be like, okay, is everything fine or is there any red flags that you should be knowing of? And that really allows me to protect my energy and to protect myself, okay? So if you want to romanticize, romanticize your life, all right? Now, lesson number five. Never let anyone tell you that your standards are too ridiculous or your dreams are too unrealistic, okay? And I need to say this. Your desires and dreams are yours for a reason. It's okay to be called delusional if that means you're bravely, like you're bravely chasing after your dreams. Nothing is ever too unrealistic if you can actually visualize it because whatever desires that come to us, whatever that you can actually visualize, it just means that in another dimension, okay, this might get a little bit woo-woo, but just in another dimension or in another, your future self is actually living that life and it's made possible for you for a reason, okay? So live life for yourself and not for others in that way. You don't have to actually regret anything if you do that, okay? Number six, 
the next two lessons are actually pretty specific to some people, to all my spiritual people or religious people. But one of it is, it's okay to embrace the spiritual side and the woo side of you, even if it may not be their thing. Everyone is different and that's okay. You should not have to feel ashamed or worse, like hide that side of yourself. Embrace that spiritual side of you, embrace that religious side of you because that's what makes you you, like uniquely you, okay? Don't ever feel like you need to hide that side of it, like from people. Just because they are not religious or just because they don't believe in spirit- spirituality doesn't mean it gives them a right to disrespect you. Doesn't mean you can't be spiritual or you can't embrace this religious part of you, okay? And I know this too well because for a good period of time, I've always been like embarrassed that I'm rather spiritual or I'm rather like religious, especially, you know, in this time and age, I feel like not a lot of people, at least for my age, they are not very spiritual. Most of them are free thinker or rather they just believe in whatever. But everyone is different, right? And I learned to, during these two years of just healing within myself, I learned to acknowledge this part and I learned to embrace it, that tapping into my intuition and tapping into my spiritual, my spiritual side and my religious side really helps me to bring in like my manifestations and that is just me, right? I'm not saying that to bring in your manifestations, you need to be spiritual, but it's more that to understand how like the life or how world, the world works, right? I'm more of a little bit of both. I'm more religious and I'm also more spiritual. So I mix the thing, the both together. But honestly, do whatever that you want to do because it's your life and no one else's life, okay? You are made the way you are because you have something to provide to this society. So don't ever feel embarrassed of showing up as the most authentic version of you. And if that most authentic version is you being spiritual, go ahead. Because honestly, you will find your tribe. When you put yourself out there, when you embrace this authentic version of you, you will find your tribe. And you will realize that people who are like you, who have the same interests as you, will come into your life. You will start attracting them with your energy. Okay, so don't be embarrassed. Next is... If you don't have the answer, simply pray and surrender to the universe. Let the universe take over. It will all be handled. You gotta trust, okay? Even if you're not a spiritual person, know that what's meant for you will never pass you by. Remember that every person that entered our lives, be it romantically or platonically, they serve a purpose. And the lesson that they bring is for you to find out. So if you want to hear more about this, watch episode 11. I talk a little bit more in depth as to everyone serves a purpose in our lives and whether or not we know the purpose right now, it's actually okay. Learn to let go of the people that wants to leave or rather that has actually served their purpose and learn the lessons. Take on the lessons that they bring you, okay? Now, lesson number eight. You don't need to seek permission for prioritizing yourself, especially your mental space. And if it hurts their ego, they are not for you, all right? Be it your business or your passion or your peace, protect it at all costs. At the end of the day, if anything were to happen to that relationship, you will be left with yourself and your business. So protect it. I know it sounds a little bit intense, but I learned it the hard way, okay? Requiring requiring time alone for yourself to reset and recharge is not selfish. It's actually selfless because then... By recharging, you can release yourself from all the resentment and blame that comes up from being imbalanced in your life. And in episode 9, I talked about finding balance. So if you're struggling to find balance in life or you feel like you are are resentful, you have a lot of resentment and you blame all the time, I would say that it's because you're imbalanced. And to find balance is actually really simple. And if you're struggling with it, please listen to episode 9, okay? Or if you just feel like something is off, it's probably because you're not balanced out. Anyways, number 9. Just because things could have been different doesn't mean it would have been better, okay? I want to repeat this again. Just because things could have been different doesn't mean it would have been better. You can't force a connection or force someone to love you the way you want to be loved. You shouldn't even try to force it because true love feels easy, okay? Love yourself first before anyone can love you. And if you heard me say this before in episode 36, the most important love is the love you give yourself, okay? Not the love that someone gives you. Because no one can satisfy the way you want to be loved other than yourself. So listen to that episode if you're struggling to give the love that you have back to yourself. Okay, I can't stress this enough. Like you gotta start loving yourself first and treating yourself the way you want to be treated to show others that this is how I want to be treated and because I deserve to be treated like this. 
okay you are the queen you are the king you deserve to have everything that you ever wanted you deserve the love that you desire to have you deserve the love that you crave for you deserve to be loved in your love language okay and, and if someone is not loving you the way that you deserve to be loved they are just not supposed to be in your life okay that's it there's no buts there's no what if there's no there's nothing else to say other than that person is just not meant to be in your life your love languages might be different doesn't mean that they are at fault but it's just more of like I want you to understand and to know to focus everything back to yourself. Notice how I've never actually mentioned about, oh, it, he might or she might think of this in a certain way, but more of you. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? How can you feel better? It's always on you because like I said a lot of times, the common denominator in life is you, okay? So think of how you can actually love yourself. How can you give that love back to yourself? Now, lesson number 10, if you have to force the connection, that person is not meant for you, okay, period. Let that relationship go, let them go, let yourself be free. You can't change how someone feels about you by loving them harder, okay. I know this too well because every single time that I speak to someone or rather even for myself, when someone detached from me, I would want to chase after them, I would want to give them more love because I feel like maybe by giving them more love, they would want to love me back as well. They might reciprocate, right? It doesn't work that way, okay? If someone doesn't, like, feel the same about you, they just don't, okay? And it's okay. It's not personal. Don't take it personal. You can't change how someone feels about you by loving them harder, okay? I need you to understand this. You're going to just hurt yourself more. Like I mentioned in last week's episode, episode 38, if you're getting mixed signals and you have to play the guessing game, let it go. It is not a connection that is meant to last, okay? Take it as a sign to double down on my previous point, which is to pour the love back to yourself, okay? So lesson 9 and lesson 10 are pretty much like um, related. So lesson 11, you're not crazy or dramatic to live the second you're being disrespected in any way, shape or form, okay? Whether it's infidelity, calling you names or any verbal abuse, disrespectful towards your parents or family, physical abuse, mental abuse like manipulation or gaslighting or even disrespecting your religion and your beliefs, leave, okay? If they can't respect you, they don't deserve to be in your life. Watch episode 32 if you feel like you need permission or the push to leave which you honestly don't but, you know, I've got you, okay? Leave if you're disrespectful disrespected because self-respect and self-worth is something that I hold very closely to my heart and I and for our life seasons listener listener by now you should know that we hold ourselves to so high of a standard in a good way best way possible we work on ourselves we love ourselves so much that we don't deserve any disrespect from anyone for whatever reason it is there's no reason for someone to disrespect you to disrespect your religion to disrespect your belief to disrespect the people that you actually care for Okay, no reason. So the simple answer is to leave. Okay, I have nothing more to say about that. But yeah, you know, don't let anyone disrespect you. Okay, because you got to respect yourself first. Remember, when you start respecting yourself and when you start treating the way you want to be treated, people will actually follow. People would see how you treat yourself. If you're not even respecting yourself, obviously they would think that it's okay to disrespect you, to step all over your boundaries, right? So always respect yourself first. Now, lesson number 12. Family upbringing and values are very important, even though it may not look like it at the start. But believe me, it comes full circle, okay? How they treat their family is not how they're going to treat yours. It's very different. I know some people say that like, oh, you can actually look at how they treat their family. It's probably how they're going to treat you. It's very different, all right? That is not a very good indicator in my point of view. But what is a good indicator is the values that they hold as a family, the way that they interact with other people or other family or just people in general, you will be able to see how they are going to treat your family because how they treat other people, the general public, is going to be how they treat your family because certain people to them, their family is family but to you, to like to them, their family is family but your family might just be your family, right? It's a very different thing. But obviously, like I said, I know there are people who treat everyone like or their significant partner as family and those are the people that we should protect at all costs, all right? It's just that sadly, some people don't see it that way. So that's lef- lesson number 12. Lesson number 13, on that note, never sacrifice your family time, okay? Time alone, regardless of whether it's a self-voluntary thing, because it will come back and bite you in the ass as time passes. 
fill your own cup up first before you can give back to someone else, okay? And again, I have an episode on that, on mastering the art of being alone but not lonely. That's episode 6, so go listen to that. I always believe that you have to be complete yourself, you have to be... Your cup has to be filled before you can actually give people. Because if your cup is constantly not filled and you're giving out your energy or your time or even like your love to people and not filling that cup up, one day it's going to be empty and you're going to start questioning why you don't have anything else to give. And people are going to start questioning you. Like, you used to give me so much love. Like, why is it not happening anymore? It's because you're not filling your cup up first. You're not taking the time for yourself. You're not taking the time to spend time alone and to recuperate, right? You need that time to re-energize yourself or rather to recharge so that you can actually be of value to people, all right? So that is not selfish, okay? Now, lesson number 14. Never lose yourself, your joy, your passion, your happy place. Never lose yourself just to fill the shoes of someone they expect you to be okay, and that is like people-pleasing. If they try to change you to fit their expectations, run, all right, run. It's never about compromising, but complementing each other. No one, not you or your partner, should make sacrifices and compromises to make things work because resentment comes next, okay? It's not selfish. I know it may sound selfish, it's not selfish. It's just understanding that everyone should put their needs before others, prioritizing themselves first before they can have the capacity to bring value to others, right? Like I said just now, if you're on your journey of finding yourself, episode 20 will definitely help you guide um, you to give you some perspective on, you know, the journey of self-discovery or like, you know, just healing in general. So never lose yourself, okay? Always remember who you are, what you want, what are your standards, what are your boundaries? Those are really important things. What are your values? What are your beliefs? Because trust me, as long as it sounds selfish or you may, you may feel like, oh my God, what if I like don't try to please them or what if I don't um I don't know be someone that they want to be I would lose them and it's okay if you can lose them or if they allow you to lose them that means they are not meant to be in your life it's as simple as that don't over complicate it don't overthink it I know it's very easy for me to say it right now but trust me I've been through it long enough I've healed enough to know that it's not easy it's not an easy journey but know to accept this fact that if you can lose someone, means that person is not meant to be in your life. Because like I said time and time again, whatever that is meant to be in your life will not pass you by. You will not miss whatever that is meant to be in your life. And that all boils down to the trust that you have with the universe. The trust that you have with yourself and with your ability. Okay, this is a lot on like self-confidence and a lot of like the inner work that you need to be doing. All right. So remember, it's not selfish to put yourself first. It's not selfish to hold on to who you are, to hold on to your beliefs, okay? Lesson number 15. Know what you want before rushing into a relationship or back into the dating scene. So you don't have to learn the same lessons all over again, okay? And I talked about this, I think, in episode 31 of It's Okay to Be Single. So... Like I said, it's okay to be single. There's no shame in it. I have a whole, whole episode on it. Like I said, 31. So this is one of the episodes that is actually pretty much like most played on our live seasons for obvious reasons because not a lot of people are talking about this. It's actually okay to be single. Like I feel like everyone comes coming out of a relationship, everyone is actually, you know, trying to get back into the dating scene, trying to find someone better, someone new to prove their worth, to prove that they can be loved, right? We feel like we have some sort of I don't know, something to prove to ourselves or to people that it's not our problem, it's their problem. And that is where the problem lies. The problem lies where you're trying to point fingers and you're trying to blame and you don't take the time to actually heal, to understand what is the lesson that this past relationship has brought you and to know what exactly you want. Because chances are, if you're run, rushing into the dating scene or into another relationship, it means that you have not actually had the time to properly sit down and think of what you actually want and the same lesson is going to hit you again. You got to learn until the universe will only keep giving you the same lessons all over again because you have not learned that lesson. Okay, so if you don't want the same thing to happen again, learn that lesson by sitting down and understanding what it means, understanding what you want, and then you don't have to learn the same lesson all over again. Okay, it's as simple as that. Nothing too complicated. So for me now, through my past relationships, I've learned that I want a man that can take the lead, that thrives in his masculine energy. And if you don't know what energies are, like I said, we all have both feminine 
which is the being, and masculine energy, which is the doing. But anyways, because I am in my masculine energy in most parts of my life, like making decisions for my business or for my career and personal growth or even for our life seasons, so I just want someone to take the lead so that I can be in my feminine energy when it comes to relationship. So know where you thrive best and balancing the different energies in your life and you attract the right people in divine timing, okay? Because right now I realize that, you know, other than my work, I'm in more of my feminine energy and I really do attract, whether it's friends or people around me, they are in their more masculine energy. They are like that provider mindset. They want to provide for people or rather they want to care for people in the best way possible. And this is something that I have to work on myself for very long before I can start attracting people like that. Because for a very long period of time, I was in my masculine energy and the people that I keep attracting are people who are in their feminine energy and it's not gender specific okay like i said it's just that their energy is more feminine so let me give you an example like when i was in my masculine energy i was attracting guys who weren't ready to be in a relationship because they're in their more feminine energy or rather they're just more they're not ready to lead yet okay nothing wrong with that it's just that it's not something that i was looking for all right so that's that those are like energies now lesson number 16 if you are not the one for them they are not the one for you, okay? It works both ways. It's nothing personal. It just means that the values are very different as you guys experience different things in life and that's very normal, okay? It's part of growing and maturing. So let it go. It's not personal. If they say that, oh, you're just not the one for me, then they are not the one for you. It works both ways. It's not like... That's why I think when you have this mentality, you won't feel that like, oh, but I need them to be in my life. I need them to make me feel complete, right? Because like I said before... You are complete as you are, okay? Everyone in a relationship, at least for me, what I feel is that you have to be complete for you guys to come together, to grow together. And I said this before in one of my episodes, like the wrong mentality to have or rather what I feel is the wrong mentality mentality to have is that you feel like you're not complete and you need someone else to come into your life to complete you. Because again, back to the point of the common denominator in life is you and no one else, okay? You feel complete, the other party feel complete, you come together and you feel like you don't have to compromise. That's why you don't need to compromise anything. You just complement each other. That's the whole purpose of a relationship and a relationship that works well, okay? So that's that. Now, last lesson, lesson 17. Um, You should never have to justify your emotions or make sense out of it. Okay, and this is a huge one. That's why I leave it to the last. Emotions are not meant to be justified or logicized, okay? They are called emotions for a reason. And sometimes you feel strongly about certain situation for a particular reason. Never ever convince yourself or allow someone to gaslight you into thinking that your emotions are not validated or are not valid. Because whatever you feel is validated and it can be validated by you and no one else, okay? You are entitled to your emotions and it's on you to work through it, no one else, okay? So know that whatever emotions that you have, you are entitled to it, you are validated, okay? I'm not talking about emotions like, you know, throwing temper tantrums and these childish emotions. I'm talking about emotions that you feel deep within, whether it's discomfort, whether or not it's the heartache or whether or not it's just feeling something off, back to, like, it's a loop, right? Back to um, lesson one, where you embrace your intuition. Trust your intuition. When your intuition is telling you that something is wrong, that you're feeling a certain way, there has to be a reason why. Don't try to justify it. Don't try to logicize it. And when you talk about your emotions and when someone else or the other party is not able to hold that space for you, they are not for you, okay? Like, because there will be people, even your friends, I can, I mean, I believe that you can think of friends who will be able to sit down with you and hold space for you to allow you to express your emotions and not feel or not make you feel like it's wrong to feel a certain way or not try to justify why you should not feel this way, okay? Because that type of people, you don't want them in your life. I don't want them in my life. We don't want them in our life seasons, all right? So, yeah, these are the 17 lessons that I've learned and as promised, I want to leave you with this bonus, okay? Every relationship has its good and bad times. Embrace all of it and learn from it. It's just like life, right? We have the ups and downs. It's the duality of life. It's the same for relationships. Don't talk shit about your ex because trust me, it tells people more about you than about your ex. 
not a good look for you, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that you can't talk about the relationship or what happened, but more of what you say about it reflects on how much you've actually healed from it. It shows, okay? Believe it or not, it actually shows. From our actions, our actions and words are actually a mirror to our emotions and wounds. So if you still have resentment against that person, that ex, it shows when you start framing the story where they are the villain and you're the victim, okay? And it's not a good look for you. Like, as a third party listening to stories, I've seen people talking shit about their ex and then just bashing their ex. But to me, what I believe is that relationship, it takes both hands to clap, right? You were once in love with each other. Whatever happened, whether or not it's, no matter how bad it is, right? Don't ever talk shit about your ex because, like I said, it shows more about you than your ex, okay? Don't stoop to their level, all right? So heal silently or if you, have, you, if you have to speak to someone, tell it to people who would not judge you but allow you to have that safe space to let go of any emotions or stories that you have been holding on to and try to work it together with you or even just by lending you their listening ear, right? It's more than in- enough. So it is important who you choose to tell because you don't want to go to people who would talk shit with you. That's the worst, okay? Regardless of whether or not they know the full story, it doesn't really matter whether or not they are close to you, whatever it is, it, please do not go to someone and try to tell, uh, like, tell them about your situation and have them talk shit together with you. It's just toxic, okay? It's just toxic for both your healing journey and your energy, all right? At the end of the day, we are all on this healing journey and it varies for everyone. And it is up to us if we actually do want to heal. If you don't want to heal or rather if you feel like you want to heal but you're not actually taking the actions to start healing, know that nothing's gonna work because nothing changes when nothing changes, okay? And by reminiscing about the past over and over again, it's not gonna help you. You gotta start moving on because I have received DMs of, you know, you guys or some of you, the listeners, um, sending me DMs on saying how, you know, they, don't, they just don't know, they just don't know how to move past it. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All I could see from that long text is I don't know how, I am reminiscing this, I don't want to. They don't really say I don't want to but it's more of like, I don't know how. And there are literally so many podcast episodes out there. So many podcasters or so many creators, content creators are actually producing content out there to kind of give you their advice on how they have actually gone through it. One example is Our Life Seasons. I mean, I have so many episodes on relationships related, right? The past few episodes are all on relationships related. So if you're not listening to the episode and you're coming into my DM, with love, I'm saying this with love, okay? Don't misunderstand me and don't take this the wrong way. I love every single DM that I receive and it just breaks my heart to see how much you're struggling and to know that it's possible to move past it when you want to move past it because I can't help you move past your heartbreak if you don't want to even begin to feel happy because I know it too well where it starts to get really comfortable sitting in this you know little bubble of just self-pity or just feeling upset and feel like oh poor me like why does it have to happen to me blah 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 but it's not gonna help you okay like I said I'm gonna be the big sister I'm gonna be the big person that's gonna tell you that shit like hurts okay truth hurts but you gotta move past it you can't be sitting here and thinking and not even trying or making an effort, an effort to look for solutions when the solutions are literally out there. If you are DMing me, chances are of you looking at my content, it's very high. You already know what I'm talking about. And it's probably one of from one of like the relationship episode, episodes that you are looking at, right? And those episodes are, I have full episodes on YouTube. So listen to that, okay? So if you're listening to this and you feel guilty, don't feel guilty for DMing me because I really do appreciate it. But what I really want you to do is to start be more proactive in healing, okay? Because you need to take the lead first. You need to want to start to heal before I can actually say anything or give you any advice on healing, all right? So with that said, I'm still very grateful and I'm very, very thankful for all of it, okay? At the end of the day, like I said, your journey, your healing journey, it's a continuous journey. It's not a journey with an end. We, we are always healing. I'm still healing. I'm pretty sure everyone else is still healing as well. So stop reminiscing over things that you have no control over and start wanting to heal today. All right. So that's all for today's episode. I hope you've caught some important lessons. Let me know which lessons you relate to or rather which lessons you feel like it's really interesting for you. Take a screenshot of it. Take a screenshot of this. <laughs> and then... 
yeah, I just post for the camera, by the way, for those of you who are listening for Spotify. Just screenshot and then um, tag me at Our Life Seasons on Instagram, on TikTok, wherever you're on. Or comment on whichever platform that you're, that you're listening to. If you have any burning questions that you want me or burning topics that you want me to cover, I'll be more than happy to. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!